Ciao ragazzi! This is Katie Portanova, and you're listening to Florence and Me. I'm a lover of stories and all things Italian, and I'm going to bring you all that in this podcast. My intention is to inspire you to step out of your comfort zone and explore life and travel the world. Join me as I tell you my story and many others about Italy and my love, Florence. Andiamo! Ciao! I am back from my trip to Tuscany. And I know I probably say that a lot um, because I always go to Tuscany, but this trip was really, really amazing. Um, It was quick, like I had said prior to the trip but I'm really glad we went as much as I was kind of not really feeling it at first because we we were planning on going back in less than three months for Christmas so um but I'm glad we went um and as a whole we um we spent a lot of time with my mother-in-law Fernanda we um we explored some collaborators that I want to work with, which I'm really excited about. And we ate and drank and, of course, got sick because that's what you do on vacation, right? <laughs> Especially um, in between seasons. Um, well, I'll start with the fact that this trip um, was mainly for me meeting with collaborators and meeting with people that I want to work with for future retreats, for future trip planning. Um, And then maybe, I don't know, get a job with them. (laughs) That'll that'll make sense later. Um, But yeah, so when we arrived, um, of course, our travel was a little, I was a little afraid. I don't, I shouldn't say I'm afraid. I'm not afraid of travel. But since COVID and since the debauchery that was 2021, 2022, of delays, um, cancellations, waiting in airports for hours. I was not looking forward to um, this trip. One, because just so you guys know, there is no direct flights to Rome anymore from Chicago. None. Not through United, um, because that's where I fly mostly. Um, I'm trying to get all my miles so I can get eventually one day flying business class. Um, (laughs) But... Yeah, so that was something that I was looking at. I'm like, why, where is, where are these nonstop flights? There is none anymore. Like you'd stop in Newark or Philadelphia or it just was dumb. It was really dumb. So we said, screw it. Let's go back to going to Florence. Um, So we got a flight first, my first flight. Okay, this is my only flight story. Okay. Our first flight that I booked, um, we would have two stops on the way there and one stop on the way back. And then at the very last minute, I'm like, okay, it's a month away. I found a different flight. We had to pay about $600 difference, but it was worth it because we flew Swiss Air and Swiss Air is amazing. I'll just say it. I think Swiss Air is above Lufthansa for me now. After what happened during the pandemic and Air Dolomiti, which is the regional airline through um, Lufthansa, I'm like, screw them. (laughs) Sorry, Lufthansa. But Swiss Air is top to the top. Like they are creme de la creme for middle class people because their flights were somewhat on time. The one to Florence was a little delayed about an hour, but we ended up getting to Florence before midnight as opposed to last time. Anyway, so yeah, so we arrived. It was 85 degrees when we got to Florence. It was beautiful. Um, We had um, a great dinner slash lunch with Fernanda who made us our deli- her delicious uh, parmigiana melanzana, and it was, oh my god, I could just taste it in my mouth. It was so good. And she had her plethora of cheeses, meats for Stefano, and we had a lovely time. I fell asleep. I should have went to bed at like six, but I wanted to see the sunset, stayed up, saw the sunset, then I'm like, I need to go to bed. The next day was relax. Stefano had to go to the bank because of stuff having to do with his dad. Some things need to be transferred. 
a lot of boring bureaucracy stuff. That was done. And we, me and Ferdi just kind of relaxed around the house. I don't think we did anything else. I just kind of vegged. Um, and then we went to dinner with a sister. So we went to out to dinner with a sister. So that was fun. Then Thursday was supposed to be the day. Sorry. Wednesday. Yeah, that was Wednesday. Wednesday was uh, Thursday. We were going to go to Casa Lucci, but I booked late. So um, we had to move it to the the 25th, the Monday. So that day was open. So I said to Ferdi, I'm like, Ferdi, do you want to go to Florence with me? Because I want to meet with this new B&B, the secret garden. And I want to meet with Lucrezia and, and, and visit the, the place because I've never seen it. And it's magical, people. It's magical. It is just like the secret garden. Um, so Ferdi's like, sure. I haven't been to Florence in a while. Let's take the train. And yeah. So we took the train in like a rush hour. So I haven't been on a train fully packed in a really long time, probably now over 10 years ago when I used to travel by train all the time in Florence. And um, yeah, it was like different. Um, I actually train tickets easily bought at the Empoli train station. Um, there is There were two men sitting there uh, as tellers. And then there were a plethora of self-service machines. Um, so I plan on doing some sort of like post about that because, um, yeah, they still exist. I was telling Ferdi, I'm like in my local, um, small town train station, there are no people (laughs) that take tickets or buy, you can buy tickets from, you have to do it on an app. So it's amazing that Italy still has that. Anyway, so we got to Florence um, it was going to be a quick trip. So I didn't want to like, uh, I really wanted to go everywhere, but Ferdi was with me. So I kind of took my time because I, I knew she doesn't walk as fast as I do. And I was trying to get pictures of things to post on my socials and stuff like that. So the first stop as always, as when I can, is I go to Santi Apostoli. And if you this is the first time you're listening. Santi Apostoli is a church that's very, very dear to my heart. Um, it's a place that I used to go when I was um, when I was living there for solace, for tranquility, to study my bearings, like to just cry sometimes. <laughs> like so, it was great to be there. Um, Faraday got really emotional um, because actually that church is actually where Stefano's mom and dad actually got married. <laughs> which I found out later in our relationship because I found pictures that they were they were kissing outside of Santi Apostoli, his mom, Paola, and his dad, Alme. And I'm like, I confronted Alme about this. I'm like, why didn't you tell me this? He's like, why would I tell you that? He was very matter of fact. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So, um, so yeah, we lit a candle, said our prayers, said thank you to the universe, and we were on our way. Um, my friend Laura still works at Florida State University, so we ended up moseying along through um, past near Ponte Vecchio, through Piazza Signoria, which is my favorite piazza, and we went made our way to Via de Neri, where honestly I I can't believe how many people <laughs> were in Via de Neri. Via de Neri used to be like a street where my hairstylist was. <laughs> where a really good gelateria was and little cute mom and pop shops to like shop. And now it's like overrun by food and like sandwich shops. And it kind of made me sad. And actually, Ferdi said the same thing. This is really sad. There's too many tourists. I'm like, I know. It's really, really sad. Um, but anyway, on Via Donati is where Laura has her office. So we ended up having a coffee and chit-chatting for about 20 minutes, 20 30 minutes since she had a grun. And um, then we were off to, um, on our way towards Secret Garden, the Secret Garden, the B&B. And then I remembered my friend Sara has a jewelry shop right near Piazza Ciompi, which is on along uh, Via Pietra Piana near Sant'Ambrogio. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to go see her shop. Like I saw her shop before and then I wanted to see her new one because eventually when we have this retreat in Florence, like I'm taking people to her shop because her jewelry is amazing. And um, 
we walk in and I'm so glad she was open and and she gave me a big hug and I'm like oh my god I'm so happy to see you and you know long story short Faraday caught her a necklace caught her eye and she spent a little money on herself which she never does and it went perfectly with her beautiful green dress so we yeah so that was a really great experience um I was just so happy for Sada because Sada has been my friend and also been sh- doing the small business um, solopreneur job for many years. Um, and I'm just so proud of her and I want to support her in any way I can. I'll put her um, website in the, in the show notes. So if you're ever at all interested in popping by her shop in Florence or buying something online because it's really, really unique jewelry. Um yeah, so that was fun. And then we waited for Stefano in Piazza de Ma- uh, D'Azeglio, which is right near where um, the Secret Garden is. And once he arrived, I'm like, okay, we got to go, we got to go, because she only has so much time. And Lucrezia welcomed us with open arms at this beautiful place that used to be Filippo, her, her boyfriend's um, childhood home that was renovated by them. Um, his dad sadly died um, eight years prior, and this was his dream to make his house into a B and B because they're right in the center, and it's it's a prime location, like ten minutes from the Duomo, like five minutes to the best market, <laughs> like it's just so close to everything. And what's great about it is that for this retreat, we won't have to use a car. So we'll be going by train. We will rent a car. Um, we'll have a driver, mind you, and um, to take his places. But we won't have to rent one for the two weeks, almost two weeks, 10 days that we're going to be there. So and inside the secret garden, the decor that Lucrezia did, it is phenomenal. And when I asked her, she's like, Pinterest. <laughs> so any of my Pinterest people out there, she found all her awesome decor from Pinterest and it is up like top level um, renovations every room has its own bathroom there's a beautiful courtyard where there's a beautiful cat and some and a turtle um, in the courtyard where we'll have breakfast Um, and a beautiful kitchen where we can do a cooking class which we're not going to do it there Um, but there's a lot of other things we can do in the kitchen eat drink be merry you know so after meeting Lucrezia I took a few pictures took some videos I will be putting up doing a reel eventually and talking about that once we get closer to July 2025 um but yeah I'm so glad I met her I'm so glad I met her I just she's amazing she's got great energy she is in Italian say le solare and she's full of sun she's just beautiful and happy and just welcoming And I can't wait to share her and her place with you because she's got just a great, a great place. (laughs) Can't say it enough. Um, Yeah. And so that was our day. And then ending our day, which it's not really ending our day, um, but we went to Chidi Bay, which is our favorite restaurant when we lived in Florence. It was near our home. And I had my beautiful pasta with mussels and vongole and it was delicious as all things. Um... And what I noticed about Chidi Bay, which is um, most restaurants are like this in Florence or in Tuscany, but not all. But I took a lot of pictures of this. Um, but Chidi Bay is great. Their menu, they've renovated it so much and they changed um, like it all up. And what I love about it is they still have the handwritten um, specials and handwritten menus. I mean, given that they've they've copied the handwritten menus, but it's like authentic and I love it. And I took a bunch of pictures because I'm like, oh, my God, I love this menu <laughs> so much. So like my my note, I think I, I talked about this a few episodes ago, but like when you're looking for a restaurant in Italy, look for the restaurants with handwritten menus to say in. those are the most special ones. Um. Yeah. So after that, um, the next day we were heading to Umbria. Now, Umbria is beautiful. I, I, I'm i so glad we went. The place we stayed it was attached to uh, somebody that Stefano really wanted to meet. And his name is Giorgione. And I talked about it in the last episode. We met Giorgione. 
he's really, really amazing, really sweet. The food was great. It could have been, it wasn't like what we expected. It was basically eating at somebody's home. Um, so it wasn't top level amazing Michelin nothing because it's very home home cooked meals and it was a lot of food I'll be honest um and it was all it was all good there was one of the pastas we weren't too keen on it had a lot of olives and stuff and I was not a big on olives neither am I (coughs) excuse me I'm still sick from the plane um but yeah anyway It was a great experience. I thought about having that villa as part of our villa experience and traveling there and then exploring around. I don't think I'm ready to go to Umbria yet, at least not to that place. I wasn't that impressed with the, I was impressed with the place. Like it's beautiful on the outside, very nicely renovated. There's a pool. There's not a lot of views. You are on like a hill that's around a curve, like the road curves around it. So, and we're kind of right, in, we were right inside of like a forest. So you don't get a lot of views. It's not that picturesque. Um, I'm pretty sure I got bit by a really big spider <laughs> inside. Um, well, that you can't handle in any type of country home. There's going to be spiders. There's going to be large insects. But yeah, I wasn't, the, 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 the bedrooms and the bathrooms in our bedroom well, at least, again, I just saw one because we had a triple. They could be updated. Um, they're not up to par. They were very nice, very clean. Everything was very clean. Air conditioning in the room, perfect. Um, but yeah, not for us. And I didn't feel it when I walked in. I usually can tell when I want to have people come to a place. So I'm glad we experienced it. It was a really great um, place. I would recommend if you want to go to Umbria. It's a really beautiful place the restaurant and the breakfast was amazing um so yeah I mean it's if you want to go two and a half hours south of Florence you can because Umbria is Umbria is gorgeous there's so much to see in Umbria I want to explore it someday but at this moment not now from there we headed back we took our time to get back to um Castel Fiorentino we got back around noon we took our time we kind of relaxed. Um, that night, we actually went out with our dear friends, uh, Alessandro and Adriana. Um, Stefano has been friends with Alessandro forever. And Adriana became one of my best friends the moment I met her 10 years ago. Um, so, yeah, we always pick up where we left off, even now that we have they have a child in tow, Brando, who's the same age as my little nephew, Luca. Um, he's adorable. We had a lovely dinner. Um, I enjoyed spending time with them. And again, it's like time doesn't pass when we're with them. And when you find friends like that, you kind of just want to be with them all the time. And when I told Adriana we're moving back, she's like, when? I want you to come back right now. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, soon. Not now. Not yet. But soon. Um, But yeah, so that was nice. Um, Then from there... Um, oh, I totally forgot like the most important part. Okay. I'm going to rewind. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be in order. (laughs) On our way to Umbria, we first stopped at this beautiful jewelry workshop in a little bit outside of Chianti, about 20 minutes outside of Chianti in a town called Sambuca. (coughs) <coughs> excuse me and I got to meet finally Katarina and her mother Tatiana um they have been running this family business since 1970 and I bought some jewelry it's very beautiful it's artesian made it is a small company it's a dying company I want to say not not saying that they're not they're running out of business but um the craft of making jewelry and the way they make it is dying. So it's beautiful that I can share Katarina and and Argento Firenze is the name of the company with you. Um, I plan on taking people there in September. It's going to be a little side trip. Um, I don't think I'll do the workshop yet because I don't have time. 
but we will do the factory tour and we can go shopping and everything. It's just so fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a beautiful place. Um, Katarina, I can tell has heart soul into this place because of her dad. Her dad started in 1970. Um, and her dad, sadly in the mo at the moment we, we were there, um, he was in the hospital. So they were waiting to hear when he was going to get out of surgery or something. So I'm praying that he's okay for Katarina. Um, so that was a great experience. Um, I really can't wait to share, um, this jewelry, this company, this family with you. Um, it really touched my heart because she, like Paolo at Al Altiero, like Lorenzo, like Casa Lucci, like they have heart. You can tell the passion. You can feel their energy, how much they love it and how much they love the craft and they don't want it to die and they want to keep sharing it with people. So that is our gentle. Okay. And then right after that, we were invited by Gianluca, which I've talked a lot about him. And now I finally met him. And he is as amazing as I thought he was. And Ferdi, that was the first question she asked me. She's like, is she is he exactly what you expected? I'm like, yes. Like he is one with the universe. He speaks spiritually. He talks about how I'm so glad our our paths cross. We were meant to meet. Like this man, I'll tell you a little bit about his history. Again, I've just met him. We spent four hours together for a nice four-hour lunch. And he has um, so much training in culinary. I just could tell right off the bat. One, because the fegatino and the little crostini with um, eggplant that he made, especially for Ferdi because she's vegetarian, were amazing. Like, I never tasted fegatino like that. And then he made us this delicious pasta and this delicious sec second dish um, with meat. And Ferdi got this delicious vegetarian meal. Honestly, I, I couldn't believe my heart. <laughs> like, I was like, this man is so kind and so willing to give and give and give. And I even offered... I'm like, I will pay you for this meal. Like, you didn't have to pay for, you know, uh, make us lunch. Like, I wanted you to just stop by and have a chat. And then we were going to be on our way to Umbria. But he's like, no, 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 you're stopping. You're having lunch with me. I want to meet you. I want to talk to you. I want I want to know you. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Gianluca. I told him at the end, I'm like, can I hug you? Like, He's like, yes. And I have a lovely picture of him with, with Ferdi and me and, like, Ferdi even said, you have to bring people here. You have to. This is something people have to experience because he is unique. He is special. He is heart, soul, passion. It's it's like this should be like my mission of like finding heart filled, soul filled, passionate people in Tuscany, in Italy, because those people are hard to find, hard, are really hard to find. And like for him, it's not about the business because he just started five months ago. I was, was mistaken. I might've said on the podcast that he started after the pandemic, but it was actually just five months ago. And now he's like, like brush fire. Like everybody's requesting him. Everybody's calling him everybody like a villa. He has connections with some people in common with me. Like want, they want him to come and make lunch at his, at their house in a villa nearby. Like, I mean, this guy is like, amazing I need to find a different adjective but I love amazing <laughs> so Gianluca is on the schedule for September 2024 we are going to his house we're going to have a cooking class um we're gonna spend basically the day in Monteferrale <laughs> and then make our way slowly back to Castel Fiorentino at night I, I you just have to be around him you have to feel his energy you have to ask questions even though his English is, is, is getting there. But I told him, I'm like, you're, I don't care. I will translate for you. <laughs> like, I don't care. I think you are somebody that everybody needs to meet. Everybody needs to meet. So that is Gianluca. I'm so happy he's in my life now. I told him, I'm like, I might just call you randomly to grab your energy because I need it. And he's like, oh, please. I'll do the same. I'll call you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um... Yeah, so that that's amazing. I had a great experience with him. 
Um, and, um, yeah. And then from there, the last thing that we were going to do, which was just because I wanted to take Ferdi there because she loves the wine. We went back to Kazalushi for the third time. <laughs> we went for a wine tasting and I asked, you know, beforehand, I'm like, is there any way Lorenzo can be there? Like, I'd really like to talk to him. And, you know, the message was sent to him. It was during the Vendemia. They were doing the harvest um, for the grapes, but he made it. And this is another person that I so wholeheartedly believe that he is just a, a dear, dear friend and person. <laughs> like, he's an honest, gentle, um, wanting to share his craft, wanting to share his history with people and this time I luckily I finally got to meet his son Orlando who is just like him he's amazing and um even during the tour I had to remind I wanted to remind Orlando to say like hey talk about why you call the the wine Maretera he's like oh yes 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 brilliant Kate brilliant I'm like I'm like oh I'm like I like work here <laughs> and I joked about that a little bit throughout the wine tasting and then at a certain point, Lorenzo's like, hey, I need to give them the this group of Americans, like the Vincenzo, why don't you come over and help me? And I'm like, okay. Um, so it was like really cool to like, you know, to act like I work here. <laughs> I work at Casalucci. I know all about the wine. Not really. But I'm trying. <laughs> like, I, mm, it was great. I, um, I embodied that feeling of like, being part of something that's true and and um and unique and authentic and <clears throat> I think that when you find these types of experiences and when you find these types of people you really just want to hold on to them and you don't want to let them go and you want you want to share them with people and that's exactly what I want to do with everybody that I meet in Tuscany, in Italy, everywhere. <laughs> doesn't have to be just in Italy. But Casalucci is definitely on the list for September 2024. And I'll probably be on the list for a long time because I just love being there. Um, the experience itself is, is one in a million. Like you get taken to all the different parts of the vineyard um, down in the cantina and the history of his his family is just great and the food is great everything is locally sourced um especially the cheese and the bread and the, and the meat and everything and then you get delicious wine and then you get to purchase the wine and ship it home what is there's nothing better than that um and just so you know like if you come with me to visit Casalucci um, or Monteferrale. Um, actually, Monteferrale, I'm not sure yet, but I'm sure I'll, I'll get it. But Casalucci, for sure, you will get 10% off your wine purchase if you ship it home. And let's say you're you're doing a wine tasting with me this fall. You'll get 10% off if you want to make a diff separate shipment, just with me. You won't get that on the website. You won't get that when you go by yourself. Only with me and Truly Italy. That is the relationship I have with Lorenzo. And I I'm, I just love that I get to share his wine and his family with you. Because it's, it's something that I honestly can say this is always what I wanted to do. <laughs> I'll put it right there. I don't want to go longer than 30 minutes, but I might um, on this podcast. But... I really always, my desire to be in Italy and my desire to share Italy with people all started with just one person and it's Pasquale because Pasquale, as much as he was, he is, he's still alive. <laughs> he is my little guru man and like just authentically himself always. In every situation I have been in with new people that I've met, I have like felt him. 
because I feel like I can tell when things aren't unique and when things aren't authentic now. And I think I might have like a Pasquale switch in my mind or in my brain or in my body because like I didn't feel it at Villa Selva in Umbria, like with Giorgione, like I didn't feel that authenticity um, like I do with Lucrezia or Caterina or or um, Gianluca or Lorenzo or the other Lorenzo, Mozzarella. Like those are authentic people, not saying that Giorgione isn't, but like the experience for me is authentic and it's genuine and it's and, and they're just being themselves. They're not, they don't care if you buy wine or not. They don't even care if you don't truly make the meal after Gianluca gives you the recipes. It's the moment that counts. In the moment, are you enjoying yourselves? In the moment, are you connecting? Because truly Italy and all my experiences that I've had has always been about connection and always has been about authenticity. Because there's so many things when you travel, you might think in the moment, oh, this might be authentic. I don't know. But if you've never been to that place with somebody that knows the people, knows the language, knows the culture, it possibly isn't authentic. And again, I'm not, I always, I always back up and do this, but know that I don't bash I don't like to put any other experience down in Italy, in Tuscany, because I don't. I don't want to do it anymore. I used to talk down to certain types of tour groups and like stuff like that. I don't, not companies, I don't know any companies, but like there's so much to share in Italy that you don't have to, there's no right or wrong. And I was, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll share this last story and then I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it up. But last night we went out to dinner at now our, another favorite Italian restaurant outside of Chicago, um, called Osteria Trulli and it's a Pugliese, um, restaurant. Um, the owner is from Puglia, is from Bari and it is authentic Italian food. I'll be honest. If you're outside of Chicago, I'll tell you where it is because it's good. It's really good. Um, last night, we sat next to a couple that were I heard overheard them talking about an upcoming trip to Italy. And with the wine in me, I just like started speaking up and they heard that it was Stefano's birthday and they said happy birthday to him. And then I just happened to start talking to him. I'm like, hey, you know, where are you going in Italy? And they're like, oh, well, we're going to go two days in Florence, spend some time in Rome, and then we're going to take a boat. They're going to Sicily, Croatia. I can't remember where else. Maybe Greece. <coughs> and I'm like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Like, that sounds like a great trip. I'm like, have you been to Italy before? And and the husband hadn't, but she had. And um, and I said, well, just enjoy every moment of it. Like, just take your time. Enjoy. Um, don't rush through it, you know. And then it slowly came kind of, I to sh- make it shorter, the story, because I always go off. Um at the, towards the end of the conversation, I was just like, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. I gave him my business card. Um, if you guys ever want like a true authentic experience in Tuscany, um, and I explain, you know, I do retreats in, in Tuscany. My mother-in-law is our chef. Um, Stefano drives us around. Like we go to really small places. It's six to eight people. It's, it's very intimate, very unique. Um, you get to know the place and it's one activity a day. That's it. And they were like, oh my God, I wish we knew you before this trip. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I want you to experience this trip because that's where you get an idea of where you want to turn return, right? And that's also a reason, a way for you to understand, like, do I like to travel like this? Do I like going boom, boom, boom? Or do I like to take my time? Or, you know. Whatever else is your, you know, favorite thing, type of travel, whatever it is. You find those things out. <coughs> I'm sorry, I keep coughing. Anyway, but it was a beautiful experience because I authentically was just like, hey, take it or leave it. 
if you guys want to join us, great. If not, share me. Share me with your friends. Because I really want to share these experiences with other people. And it's hard for a small business, <laughs> like all my small business people out there, to get the word out. So, you know, just my little more, you know, um, not more, you know, a little advice for all my solopreneurs out there. Um, it doesn't hurt to just put it out there. Just say you, you do tours in Italy. Or just say you're an amazing photographer and, hey, here's my card. You know, just put it out there. Let it land. If it lands, great. If it doesn't, great. At least you put it out there into the universe, right? That's what I think. Okay, 35 minutes. Let's stop here, Katie. Uh, allora, buongiorno, buonasera, buonanotte, wherever you are. And I will speak to you soon. Uh, presto. Ciao, ciao. I am beyond grateful for you listening to my podcast right now. I am so excited to share my journey of living abroad and all of my stories of Florence and Italy and all the places in between that I've visited. If this has reached you in any way and you would like to continue, please subscribe now. Also, go check out my website, Truly Italy. Dot tours for all my travel experiences. Ci si vede. Ciao.